because in this picture right here, out of bio, you ain't making that kind of face. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my goodness. Not right there. <laughs> so before we get into that, my people, let me preview a little bit. This was the part of um, Peacemaker that caught my attention along with one other part, but I'll let you guys see this one first. BA, the floor is yours. Give me your thoughts and opinions on Peacemaker this past episode and what you like, what you didn't like. Um... What I liked, well, no, I, I mean, I'll just start what I didn't like. To be honest, I mean, okay. what I've loved about the show so far <laughs> is the comedy and how bold it is, or just how they don't care and they're just we're gonna say whatever we want to say and do what we want to do. But I gotta be honest, this episode the comedy was starting to get on my nerve a little bit. Thank um, you. Between Peacemaker really? and uh, Vigilante, at the very Thank beginning you. of this episode, when he was like, "But why did you frame my father? You could have framed Bill Cosby and and Optimus Prime and." And Christina Ricci, and he just started going down all these names. And I'm just like, damn, man, shut up. This is not funny. I felt like Murray. He was like, Peacemaker, will you please shut the fuck up? You know, uh, <laughs> uh, my, my, it, you know, I, I, I'm, I only use the F bomb because they use it in the show. So I, uh, I mean, it be able, this is a free channel. You can say, you can say anything you want as long as it doesn't involve those type of adjectives and conjunctions dealing with children. But other than yes, that, yes, say whatever yes. you want to say. <laughs> you can feel free when you yes, hang with yes. me. Yeah, but I was, I was, uh, I was with, I was down uh, with Mern this whole time. Just like y'all, shut the hell up. Like the jokes was just a bit too much, you know. Um, I, 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 I was annoyed. Now, when they went into the warehouse and they was fighting all the the butterflies and stuff and the bomb, you know, that was cool. I was kind of laughing when. Autobio, every time uh, Peacemaker Chris kills somebody, Autobio will come and shoot him right afterwards. He, he, he's like, you don't have to shoot him. When I, she's like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. So that, that was cool right there. Um, <laughs> but the, the comedy, man, that was just, you know, I, I, they just needed to tone it down just a little bit to me. Um, but other than that, it was a cool episode. I, 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 I co-signed everything you said, B. Avery. Some of what I was saying I was going to say is what you said, but I told you from day one, this, that sentiment has been my sentiment about the comedy in this thing. It's kind of watching John Cena just reminded me of slapstick comedy. Um, and, you know, that is a coded a coded language for something I'm not going to say, but it was slapstick comedy. And John Cena was just getting on my last damn nerves with it. Um, and it just finally just bubbled over this episode. So that apology that I gave one take last week. I'm going to take that shit all the way back right now because John Cena just, he ruined it for mm. me this episode. Mm. Yeah, man. But go ahead, Larry. It's funny that you guys said that because that was one of my favorite scenes, man. Oh, <laughs> ew, ew, ew. He just ew. kept going and going and going with all kinds of different names. And then they had the post credit scene where he was doing, but he was even giving more names. And I, I, was, I was in stitches watching that scene. I thought it was hilarious. I, I'll be honest with you. I, I like the ridiculous, over-the-top comedy with this because the idea, I mean, John Cena in, in his in his whole look, he's so freakishly huge. I mean, he's almost he's almost comical just looking at him. He's so large of a human being that it's just that to add all of that in there. All that extra over the top comedy just makes it funny for me because otherwise, I think if he try and if he tries to be serious and act too, you know, and try and be too much of a serious actor, I think for one, he probably just doesn't have the acting chops just yet. And I think that what he's doing right now just works for him. Um, there was some stuff in here that I really liked. I love the way that how they just instantly switched over with Econos. When he came in there and chainsawed that dude, it was like all of a sudden it was like Peacemaker had respect for him. He was like, he stopped calling him, you know. I mean, obviously, you know, what's your name told him, to, you know, out of bio said stop calling him Die Beard, but it was like, forget that. It was like he immediately started calling him, um, you know, Economos, Economos, and and then he was like, you could tell it was just sort of like this dude's legit. He came through in the clutch, you know. And he did. He did diss his boy, which I thought was kind of messed up when when uh, when uh, 
vigilante was like, that was my thing. I just said it 15 minutes ago, and then here he comes doing it. You know, he was like, it would have been way cooler if he would have gave me the chainsaw, and then I did it, and he was like, I forgot what he called him, his nickname for his for his dick. He called him something. He was like, nah, stop being a whatever, and, you know. <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, I liked it. That's cool. That's cool. It, it's like the way this episode started with um, Chris waking up intoxicated, you know, it seemed like he really got a um, a sense of reality finally. And mm-hmm. he was just gonna, you know, calm down. But then he's talking about finger banging with Adebayo, <laughs> talking right. about, oh, I, and, what, and she made she had made a good point. So she was like, so you thought women's fingers fall off doing sex? You know, it was just like, man, I, I don't know. I just thought we was kind of past that. You know, I, I'm right. not saying that he right. completely just abandoned his humor, but it, it's kind of like he didn't, he hasn't learned anything yet or something. I, I don't know. It, it just, like you, inst- instead of him evolving, you seem like he was regressing. And yeah, it, yeah. It, see, that's why I, I like I did, it though. Because he's not like evolving. That that's who he moment. is. That's just who he is. It's not a matter of him trying to grow into be some better person. He's exactly who we see him as, and that's part of the reason why, like like Mern said, that's why we need them. We need these types of dudes right now, right here. And I, I'll tell you the thing that I really liked about this episode. One thing I really liked was when um, was when uh, Harcourt she let her she she let her her guard down. You know, normally she's so she has this big wall up. She's all serious, and she. Put her wall down. She took her phone out and took that nice photo of the crew and then sent mm-hmm. it out to everyone at the end. It was almost like saying, you know, because she's always talked about it. she never really had a family or friends or what it was like. Her dad taught her to be like a serious killer and everything. But she's never really been like part of a crew like that. And now if it's not not only is she showing that everybody like you're my crew, but she's letting everybody else know we are a unit. We are a crew. And if you notice the cool thing about that was is Mern wasn't in that photo. And that was important because we know Mern is a butterfly. Good now, point. Do I, you I think, didn't even notice that. Do you think that that picture is going to be used for some kind of nefarious purpose in the future? I got a feeling it is. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if we see that like in a DC, like in another Suicide Squad movie with, you know, it shows up on somebody's screen or something or Waller mm-hmm. uses it. Mm-hmm. No. Now, the only two parts that I liked was the warehouse scene and at the end when Adebayo had on a Peacemaker's helmet and she could see X-ray and saw that Myrne was a butterfly. And I'll go back to the warehouse. For a minute there, B. Avery, I thought that was Gorilla Grodd. I was, I was starting to come out of my chair thinking, oh my God, they got Gorilla Grodd up in this thing until he got hacksaw Jim Duggan right through the gut. And I was like, there's no way they would let that be Gorilla Grodd. Because I can easily see him using his mind control to control these butterflies. Because we already know, based on some things that we've seen, there's probably some good butterflies and some bad butterflies. And we just don't know how it's being controlled. So I thought that he was using his mind control to control the um, butterfly. But it's not him because they killed him. And then we do get to the very end. And I'm sitting here thinking, out of by you. You can't run faster than that. You can't get out that door a, a step faster and then swing around and shoot him with your gun. You couldn't do that. <laughs> and he caught her. And I was like, man, yeah. what is what is he gonna do to her? So BA, what's he about to do to her? I don't he's not killing her. So what is he gonna do with her? He's gonna make her a butterfly. Um I think he's just gonna reveal the truth. Uh oh. And it's going to be some exposition, and Ooh. she's gonna have to make a decision. Because you may be right, there may be good butterflies and bad, bad butterflies. Mm-hmm. You know, he may be a good butterfly. But uh, you made me think about something. Well, first, let me let me go back real quick. Uh, yeah, good point, Larry, about the uh, hardcore in the photo. I did say that. That was a nice mm-hmm. little trend, growth for her character. Because, right. as you said, she was in the bar by herself. And then she sent the photo out to everybody. And when she was getting the responses, she was smiling. And that's great right. because, you know, with the emoji and then, you know, uh, Vigilante sent the mermaid um uh, emoji and there was like he was like yeah it means every, like i think chris was like yeah it, it means every emoji from happy all the way to sad and autobio was like well what's the point of the emoji then if it's every emotion so that was kind of funny uh yeah, right. but hardcore has always been 
by herself alone. Or we, when we first saw her in episodes one and two, she was at the bar by herself. Old dude tried to shoot a shot. She was like, yeah, do you know how to solve fish breath disease or something like that? And then he like <laughs> bucked at her. And, and then like later on in the season when she was by herself, it may have been episode four, Peacemaker uh, approached her and she was like, dude, this is this is uh, off, we um uh, this is out of office hours. I don't want to talk to you. you right. Know what I'm saying I want right. to be by myself. And he walked yeah. away talking yeah. about her tits and all that. Um, talking about it's not a sexual nice. to give you a g- genuine compliment. But now she's yeah. in the bar and she's like, man, I miss these guys. I want to send a picture and you know reminisce on the good day that we had today. I just think that's kind of uh, dope right there. So um, yeah. now going to the gorilla thing. I like you. I thought that was gorilla grod at first. You know initially, but I was like, wait a minute, that can't be gorilla grod. But two, I'm I'm disappointed because they kind of foreshadowed that in season one or two with that news clip on the the, the news. They were talking about the big gorilla in the background, and so mm-hmm. we was waiting for that to come back. But as soon as he comes back, he's he they kill him as soon as we should. They we, kill we, him. him. So I'm right. like, what? I'm mm-hmm. like, come on, why, why, what, what was, was the point? point? You know. Yeah. And then yeah. every, everybody should have died. Not only is this is a gorilla, this is a super gorilla. One, super strong. One swipe. One back fist. Not only are they dead, their body part is dismembered or, or whatever. You know? Right. I mean, he like, hitting them so B, he hitting them so hard, he's slapping the skin off their body. Bruh, yeah, man. But, I mean, he he had a he had a peacemaker like this and was about to smash him down, but he was like, no. And then he came back in and said, "Die, human." I'm like, he, he should have killed them. So that execution. Th- this is just more reasons why this wasn't my favorite episode. It, it wasn't trash, but it was just these moments. So I was like, okay, you know. See, so. see, B, you agree with me. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. But see, you know, I haven't never been really and fully, well, okay, I was on the John Cena bandwagon last week. I was. <laughs> because because I saw the character moving in a good direction. I'm off that bandwagon now. One take, I'm off. You had me. Back then, you didn't want me. Now I'm hot. You're all on me. But when I'm off, I'm off of them. Because this episode just did it in for me. And mm. how y'all feeling about Vigilante? Are y'all liking his character? Um, I still like Vigilante. I like Hardcore. I like everybody. It's just John Cena's missing it with me, uh, especially this coming back episode. So be like, who's your favorite character to this point? Myron, still, by far. I love Myron. Yeah, Even Larry. with him being a butterfly, he's just funny. Uh, but Vigilante, I mean, just like he was just a bit annoying this episode, you know? Like, mm-hmm. it, it, it. Going, I, I don't. I had to sound like a broken record, but it was the last episode or the episode before that where Autobio talked him into going into the prison and executing Chris's father, uh, the White Dragon. When he came out in his regular clothes, when Hardcore picked him up, he was sad and had his head down, and he was in his regular clothes. And he got into the car. You know, the the White Dragon is still alive. You know, I feel bad. I feel like it's worse. And he was distraught. And so I'm, yeah. I'm thinking there, okay, like he's gonna mature a little bit and learn. But then we, we in in this current episode, he's still like talking about butt orifices and PowerPoint presentations and other stuff. I'm just like, why? You know, I don't know. I just I don't want to go back to that. So he's I like Mern. Vigilante is annoying. <laughs> you know. Uh, so my t- my two Larry, before I give it to you, I'm still on the Eagly train. I love Eagly. I love Peacemaker's Eagle. And I'm still down with the vigilante. But Larry, who you got? Who your two favorite? Uh, my vigilante is definitely is definitely my uh, my favorite so far. I I just he's yeah he's he's great. Yeah. I just he's I like dude. him. Whoever wrote his character for this is fantastic. They've just they did a really great job balancing him with uh, with Peacemaker, and mm. I you know. I like Autobio's character too, partly I think because I just like her as an actor, you know? Okay. I mean, her character is cool, but I just like her as an actor. I like her whole vibe. So, um, you know, we'll have to see how she plays out. But I like, it's hard because I like Harcourt too. Like Harcourt's character is, I mean, especially since we didn't really get to know much about her in the Suicide Squads and now we're actually getting to know her a little bit. It's kind of cool to see her. I, I just want them to do like a whole episode just on her, you know? And, and no love for KKK daddy. Oh, hell no. I almost feel like with, I feel like what's his name? Uh, something Patrick. Um, I forgot his, I forgot the actor's real name. I feel like he needs to do a movie where he plays like a underground railroad conductor or something. <laughs> you know, he needs, he needs to play something else. I feel like he plays too many of those types of roles and, 
and people can start he, believing it. You he's know? got that look, man. He just has that look. And um, fellas, I'll I'll get you out of here on this. I want us to preview episode six, make some predictions. I got the trailer. Let's take a look. See you soon. Where'd you, boss? I'm gonna do something I should have done a long time ago. What's that? Kill my son. Mm. Dude, you still have that thing? Yeah. What is Goff doing? What the fuck? Get the troops together. Let's go get Peacemaker. Quick summarization: The daddy's yeah. gonna get out. He's going looking for Peacemaker. He he done went and called a whole redneck clan. He's gonna put on his suit. He's gonna become the villain from the comics, which everybody's seen this kind. This ain't no surprise right here. But what is kind of surprising is Vigilante's taking a look at that butterfly, and the butterfly is actually communicating with Peacemaker. He put up a Peacemaker sign on. The glass, which tells me, like I was saying earlier, it's probably some good butterflies and some bad butterflies. They roll up to John C. I mean, excuse me, Peacemaker House, about to come kick in the door, wave in the 4-4. And then that police officer that Mern contacted is standing out here. And I can't tell if that's butterflies or if that's spaceships. What it look like to y'all, butterflies or spaceships? No, those look like butterflies, I think. Okay. Spaceships. Look like spaceships to me. You know, you remember when um uh Chris and Vigilante ran a train on the the neighbor's wife, <laughs> yeah, and then he pulled man. out. He, and I think he pulled that was out, more of a threesome, right? No, I hope not. Um, <laughs> uh, I hope it was a train. Uh, he, <laughs> he pulled out the little rock with the alien language, and then it it turned into like a little disc thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I think those are. Excuse me. Yeah, okay, it could be that. Okay. okay. All right, B.A., but give me, give me the summarization of what you think is going to happen this coming episode. Look, well, this looks like going to be a better one. Huh? Oh, yeah. It's, it's definitely like going to go gonna down be. with the white dragon suit. You know, we're going to see yes. um, what all yes. that can do. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope we get some I nice fights. Uh, yep. You know, somebody's going to die. Um, what else? Um, uh, yeah, those are spaceships. White dragons are going to F up some stuff. Um, the cops I coming for Peacemaker. Yeah, I'm. A, I'm. A, I'm. A, uh, I think. Um, what is the name? Vigilante is going to voluntarily put that butterfly up his butt. Just oh it's no, just oh it's no. Curious. He going to be like, I want to oh, know what's going to happen. Blue oh blue. no, <laughs> please, Vigilante, don't listen to me, Avery. Please don't now, pick don't, that thing up. You know. It's friendly. This is a friendly one. Maybe the mm. friendly. Maybe he see Larry. What B. Avery saying is, in order for him to save them from the police. He might have to take he might have to take one for the team. Trust that this is a peaceful butterfly, and he's gonna put it up his butt. And he's gonna, isn't, go though, he's gonna... isn't that yes. the one that he captured from the uh from the chick that he that he had sex with and then sh and then shot her? Yeah, but I mean that, apparently that thing, well, that thing was trying to kill him. Apparently, this thing has decided to bond with him because he's been keeping it like a pet and feeding it. And so now it's mm -hmm. trying to communicate with him, Larry. Yeah, okay. they're gonna be like a little superhuman, super zord, yeah. or something. You yeah. Know? So, yeah, and he's so, kept eagerly from eating it. <laughs> right. Here's one thing I'm thinking is that I think that um, we're gonna find out that that Mern's probably been a butterfly all along, and Waller knew that he was a butterfly, and. Mm -hmm. And been work, and she sent him there for that purpose to work with this. So they they're working together, and I think we're also going to find out too that Waller had, you know, had her daughter and her daughter's girlfriend both fired, you know, wow. because wow. when her when the when the girlfriend came back and she said we could have never predicted that we would have both lost our jobs, and you and I'm appreciative that you took this job so that you know temporarily so that we can get by. As soon as I heard that, I was like, oh, that sounds like Waller's hands all up in there. Like she needed her daughter because she needed someone that she could trust. And she wasn't going to take the job if she already had one. So the only way to get her to, to do it is to make sure she didn't have any other choice. Because if she just got if if 
if Autobio just lost her job and her girlfriend still has one, then she just would have kept, they just would have kept living like they were, maybe cut some corners to make it, and then she would look for a new job. So the only way to really guarantee that she would have had to have taken that job is to make sure both of them lost their job. So, I mean, we've seen what kind of what kind of strings Waller can pull already. So it doesn't it doesn't surprise me at all that she can get those two fired and and orchestrate her daughter coming to work for him. So, mm -hmm. but I I would not be surprised if we see um, if we see that butterfly enter vigilante or I doubt it would be in Peacemaker, but. I wouldn't be surprised if we see it go, if we see that butterfly go into vigilante, because then it would be interesting to see vigilante square off with a, uh, with a uh, white dragon. Cause you know, at some point when a dad's coming for him, vigilante is going to be right there to fight him. And you know, and the dad's going to want to pee, he's going to want to, he's going to want to get at him. Cause he basically he beat up all of his dudes and called them out in front of everyone. And he wanted to do it, but he was like, I'm smarter than that. I'm not going to do that right here in front of everybody and get myself locked up even longer. So, you know, he, when he gets out, now that he's out, he's going to want some of that. So mm -hmm. it would be interesting to see vigilante just, I mean, cause the dude's already crazy and he's talented, but he's just a normal human being. So now if he's got butterfly strength, he might really be able to give the white dragon a run for his money. Michelle wanted me to let you know, this was the butterfly that came out of the Senator. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So, and, and for all we know, the Senator could be good. Senator could be against Mern. And then she also mm -hmm. mentioned how in the comics, um, White Dragon worked for Waller because, you know, Waller tends to go after these criminals and put them to work on her behalf. And, mm -hmm. and there's been times in the comics where Waller has had to put criminals to work on the behalf of Lex Luthor, had them thinking they was doing things on the up and up when they really was trying to undermine Superman because Waller yeah. don't really care for Superman in the comics either. So, Hey man, um, I'm, I'm here for next week, next week. Like it's going to be really, really good. Continue to post your comments, fellas. Um, I mean, la ladies and gentlemen, any last words you guys want to say? So be able to let the people know what's going on on your channel this week. And, um, we'll get out of here. Um, this week or uh, weekend, um, I'm gonna have my Euphoria season two episode four drops Sunday at nine. Uh, mm -hmm. Sunday is six thirty. I have the movie news roundup show. Um, got a you know about six, seven, eight topics that we're that I will be talking about. Um, uh, or I'll be talking about. And uh, this yeah, you know, it's been the movie releases have been very slow in 2022 mm -hmm. so far but now we are in february and it's picking back up and so uh i'm gonna be having a lot of reviews for you guys this week um they got jackass forever coming out uh <laughs> there's some other stuff too i'm thinking i'm, I'm seeing that on tuesday uh i'm seeing stuff tuesday wednesday and thursday of this week and so just uh Dang. my shows euphoria and a lot of movie reviews are coming so just make sure wow. you subscribe for all that Yep, his link is in video description, also on my related channels tab on my YouTube page. Larry, what's going on on your channel this week? Oh, man, same old madness, more of reviews. I have some tutorials coming out. I've had some people ask me about VPNs, so I've done a few videos on how to install VPNs on your routers. Um, Rode was nice enough to send me a new microphone and a whole bunch of accessories oh. with it. So, okay, um, Rode. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that, to testing that out. Um I'll probably just be sticking close to home this weekend because we're supposed to get that. Uh, we're supposed to get that. What do they call it? A, a a winter, a winter cyclone snow bomb or some crazy name that they're calling it. That is supposed to, it's supposed to blast all kinds of of snow and horrible weather, freezing temperatures and everything across this whole eastern seaboard. So, um, I'm getting it. I'll too, likely man. be sticking close to home this weekend, but yeah. Um, same old madness, different day. And, you know, if you guys are around, come check my channel out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, I pretty much have told you what's going on with me. For those wondering, the plan is to go live, uh, me and the wife, to recap power around 3 p.m. on Sunday. That's the plan. Then we'll go live again at 9 p.m. Eastern on Monday. Then Tuesday live to recap power one more time. And then after that, that's when we'll start having 
um, guests coming through, guests on two Wednesday, guests on Thursday, and noon, me and Mark Dart. Stay tuned. Hopefully, we'll be able to do that live if we can get everything lined up and the snow don't mess us up too bad. Until that next Sex is Hell video, we out.